thank you, uh, Naka, if I have your name right. Um, and I would try to pronounce the name of all of the others that I've met since I came, but I'm afraid I might mess that up. So uh, I want to express my uh, sincere appreciation for the initiative that has been taken by the Hassani Association of Saskatoon to invite people from other traditions uh, to join me today in this time of celebration. I think that this is a most noble thing that you have done, and I feel honored to be among you today and to share a few words about peace from the perspective of, of my tradition. I want to especially thank my friends uh, Saeed and Masuma, wherever they are here somewhere, that we have uh, enjoyed a friendship for several months and it was through them that I received the invitation to come and, and be with you today. My remarks uh, this afternoon are going to be more practical than they are going to be uh, theological because I think that it is in the living out of our faith that we have the, the greatest opportunity to provide positive influence in the communities where we live and in the society where we live. There's a verse in the Christian scripture that says that he, that is God, made from one every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. And I heard something about that in what has been expressed already today. But if that's true, then we are all human beings and we, spare, we share space and air and water and lots of other things on planet Earth. And so we must find ways that we can live and work together in peace and harmony with one another. That is our task. Our prophet, uh, Jesus, once said that when you enter the house of a stranger, first thing that you should say is peace be to this home. There's so much meaning behind those words. Those words mean that whether I'm approaching a neighbor that I do not know, or whether I'm approaching someone for, from a different ethnic group, or from a different religion, or from a different lifestyle, my first words should be a blessing of peace to that person. And I believe that the sincere expression of peace can set the tone for the whole relationship. At this time of year, that we call the Christmas season, you will hear songs and you may see posters or something else that express the words that the angels announced to the shepherds in the fields said, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to whom his favor rests. And peace is one of those words that's easy to say, but it is most difficult to practice. If you are married, you probably already know that being at peace with your wife or your spouse is not always easy. If you are parents, you recognize that Modeling peace for your children is not always easy because sometimes your children don't live peaceably with each other. So peace is not a passive concept that means that we should withdraw and isolate ourselves from other people. But peace is a very active word and it requires initiative, it requires engagement, it requires dialogue and understanding. In the Old Testament scriptures, the prophet Isaiah spoke of the coming of Messiah. And he said these words, For to us a child is born, a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince. And it seems to me that such a lofty title as Prince of Peace implies that he must have subjects 
who are people of peace. And peace begins in our own hearts, and it cannot therefore be extended to other people if it doesn't exist within ourselves. And being at peace with oneself is no small task. The battles within are often more consuming and ferocious than those that are waged on the outside. Canada often sends peacekeepers to troubled spots around the world. But there's a huge difference between being a peacekeeper and being a peacemaker. Because peacemakers are people of peace. Shortly before his death, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give you peace as the world gives it. You see, peace that the world offers kind of means that we will do our best people from harming each other. It's kind of like as a parent when your children are at odds with each other and you sort of stand in the middle and say, don't hurt each other, right? Uh, don't say those things, don't do those things. And so we have that, of course, on a, on a, a world scale with nations and nations. But real peace is something different. Real peace is reaching out with understanding and respect. It's to embrace our fellow human beings and even those with whom we have some differences. Someone said that we should first seek to understand and then to be understood. And I think that's how real peace begins in our, our neighborhoods and in our